this is the entranceway to the Cannes Institute. Obviously, we're going downstairs to radiation oncology. Yes? Yeah. This is one of two planning suites. This one has more high-end planning and physics planning. Um, the other one is active planning taking place now. Uh, so we do get more advanced planning here and less advanced, more routine in the other opposite room. So then you can stop. Uh, this is our trilogy room, so I'm a little noisy, sorry about that. Um, one of the main clinical sites that get treated here is breast cancer. I think almost 40% of the patients. Um, you can see they're set up for a few ray of imaging. Therapy. Okay. And this is our Tribune machine, which is, has a six-dot couch and the usual photon and electron energies, IGRT. Um, more young talent, just like any other Tribune tri tri machine. Aesthetically, it's the music. <laughs> um, and most of the space for mass and mobilization systems. Um, and it also has an exact track and brain lab. CT scanner installed about a year and a half ago. It's a Siemens 64 slice with so direct density and corrections along with a lot of fat reduction. Um, it's been a great workhorse and treatment can sometimes get 14 patients a day. This is also applies to our other clinic, which you won't visit during this tour, about 20 miles south of here. Um, and that's getting its own CT simulator within, by, by the end of the year. This is a very petite uh, HDR suite. Uh, we do some interesting um, brachytherapy applications, and that also includes this Acubus system, which uses mammography-based setup for to do uh, partial breast radiation with iridium. Um, also, there is an IX machine, very common to have the same characteristics as our Trubium. And we also have the clinic out in Green East Greenwich which is, uh, also has a high-end Trubium machine. And we're looking at further expansion into the Rhode Island area. So this is our conference room. It can hold 20-something people, although it hasn't been used quite as heavily as now because of people staying in their offices. But it's a pretty good teaching room. Uh, there is uh, state-of-the-art um, graphic display. We can treatment plans, obviously, for here for conference. And uh, it's used for a variety of size of meetings. This is space set aside for both physics residents, our senior one, and also uh, students. Um, we expect, and hence enough workstations, it's a very quiet area, good for one-on-one -on -one discussions when the resident, or sorry, when the, and the students are, are over here at the main hospital. People are the faculty physicist office, actually it's my office here at the clinic, um, in which everything is very accessible. Um, between by having physicists on the same floor, it says treatment, not at a, not at a distant floor, but where everything is needed in terms of planning and delivery. And we also have space aside for the senior physics resident. Um, and every physicist has an office of some kind, a couple of shared pods. Good day. Uh, I'm Ed Walsh, one of the associate directors of the Brown MRI facility, located here on the first floor of Sydney Frank Hall on the Brown University campus. Uh, my partner in crime, the other associate director, is Mike Worden, and the facility was established by Jerome Sains, a professor in the Department of Neuroscience, who made this facility operational in 2007. So we are here in the control room uh, where all the action takes place. Uh, this is the operator's position. Uh, we have full physiologic monitoring. Uh, we have provided this monitor to allow for students to observe activities as they take place uh, without crowding the operator. And around the room in various locations is the equipment that Mike Worden established for carrying out uh, stimulus delivery and re uh, subject response during functional brain studies, which is really the bread and butter work of this facility, although we do uh, scan in all organ systems and also uh, in animals and well as well. So let's have a look at our pride and joy. This is a Siemens Prisma 3 Tesla scanner. It's equipped with 64 receive channels, twin channel receive resonator, and we have a variety of receive array resonators for a different anatomy. So for example, 
uh, cardiac and abdomen, uh, 16 channel array for wrists and uh, fingers, and a selection of head resonators, again, for brain imaging, which is the majority of the work we do. We scanned everything from people on down to a project that I was involved with, scanning neo neonatal rat brains four at a time in this uh, wrist resonator. So we've uh, scanned at resolutions ranging from about 150 microns up to fields of view of three to 400 millimeters. So at this point, let's go have a look at our simulator room. Okay, this is our MRI simulator. It actually simulates all of the sounds and sensations of our scanner and allows us to test, for example, test subjects for claustrophobia and also to get them trained up on various tasks that they might perform during a functional brain imaging study. It also lets us mock up complicated uh, coil and uh, patient accommodation arrangements. And we also use this room, uh, as you can see over here, uh, we also have some wet lab capability here, which comes in very handy for the occasional mock-up of the Phantom for various imaging projects. So, I thank you uh, for your attention. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask. Thank you.